Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and we're getting ready to get into the latest news and rumors going on around the silver and black. The first thing that we're going to hit on here is something that makes me a little upset because I always sit up here and say Trayvon Mullen is a good player. However, he always has some injuries and can't stay healthy. Probably about three hours ago at this point that I am filming, I was the first one to post on Twitter at MitchellRens365 that Mullen posted this picture of himself in the hospital getting prepared for surgery. We don't know what the surgery is necessarily. However, it's just another injury flare up here for Trayvon Mullen, which brings me to the next player that I'm going to be talking about here on today's show. And we got a lot of big name guys. We're going to be talking about James Bradbury. We're going to be talking about the offensive line. We're going to be talking about NFL power rankings. And the latest going on in the NFL is James Bradbury, cornerback of the New York Giants. According to reports, the Giants are still trying to move on from him. And if the Giants are unable to make a deal, then you are likely to see them release him. Why? Not because he's not a good player. It's because the Giants can save $10 million in cap space, and for that organization, they would rather save the $10 million than go ahead and pay James Bradbury. The reason why I like James Bradbury so much is because he's a hell of a player and has some connections. But I want to know from everyone watching right now, go down in the comment section, whether you're on your phone, whether on your laptop, if you're watching on your TV, guess what? Whip out your phone real quick and let me know. Should the Raiders go ahead and sign James Bradbury? Type that Y for yes, or you can go ahead and type your N for no. My answer is yes. If James Bradbury is released by the New York Giants, you go ahead and you get the deal done. Some people are like, well, why wouldn't you go ahead and trade for him? I don't know if you actually have enough money to go out and trade for him right now. And if you also know a team's going to release him, be patient and wait. The Raiders' current salary cap is $5.8 million, which is 26 in the National Football League. So more than likely, you're going to have to make room for him. Fingers crossed, maybe Bradbury and the Giants, the release doesn't happen until after June 1st. Then the Raiders have essentially, you know, 20 million extra dollars that they're able to go ahead and work with. So you don't have to cut a player to make room for him. But I'm telling y'all right now, I would go out and I would sign James Bradbury the moment he is released. He played in Patrick Graham's defense, which I do really truly believe is a very important thing. And then you add on top that Trayvon Mullen's getting surgery, the fact that Mullen could never stay healthy. If Bradbury and Mullen were both 100% healthy, I will take James Bradbury every single day of the week over Mullen. You put Bradbury next to Rock Sim, and remember last season, Casey Hayward, everyone was like, oh, he's old, he's washed up. If you can find a player that knows the defense, it can go a very long way. And the fact that James Bradbury has these connections all the time. I mean, think about it. Bradbury also knows the defensive or the DB coach slash pass game coordinator, Jason Simmons. So not only do you know Patrick Graham, you also know Jason Simmons on top of all of that. And when you look at some of his numbers from the past few seasons, 47 tackles, 17 PPUs, 4 interceptions is a good year for a lot of corners. For Bradbury, some people say, oh, that was actually maybe a little bit of a down year. 54 tackles last season, or er, in 2020. 18 PBUs, three interceptions. Then you go back to his time at Carolina. I mean, this guy has always been a hell of a cornerback, not only being able to pick off the ball, but at least batting it down. And sure, once in a while, teams are going to go out and they're going to target him. I'm okay with it. If James Bradbury is the second best corner that we have on our team, because I still might actually say that Rocky Sin could be a slight upgrade, but still, two very talented players. And when you look at the past two seasons from a coverage standpoint with Bradbury, back in 2020 and then 2021, if you will, uh, so 2020 essentially, 61.5% completion percentage. He was targeted 91 times, gave up 56 grabs. He had three interceptions, the 18 pass breakups, gave up 587 yards, four touchdowns. Last season, and this is one of the reasons why some people are ripping on Bradbury a little bit, Yes, he gave up 848 yards. Yes, he gave up eight touchdowns. Yes, he was targeted 115 times for 71 grabs. But if you actually watch the Giants play, that defense was on the field so dang much that those defensive players were sucking wind. They were tired. And that's what's going to happen when you're on a bad football team. Bradbury has shown me when he's on a team that can actually move the football and he's on a reliable defense, 
he's going to be a good player. I think everyone watching right now and like the video if you agree, this Raiders offense, it's going to be better than what the Giants offense was last season. So all the time, I'm always telling you, hey, hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Well, why should you do it? Here you go. Raiders videos every single day. We have dropped a video on this channel, at least one video for the past three years. Like, that's no joke there. We go live at least once a week. I'm live right now, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. If there's breaking news, we go live. We're an interactive channel, so shout out to LI Raider 312, Anthony Morales, Brandon Vaugh. I see the super chats you guys sent in. More subs equals more videos. And... It's 100% free, man. You got nothing to lose. So hit the subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss a thing. All right, y'all. The next three rumors we got coming up here, you're going to see some just win babies. Are the Las Vegas Raiders a top 10 team in the National Football League? Drum roll. I'm going to go ahead and give this one four just win babies. And now that I'm noticing that, kind of looks like Marshall's Saturday night plans. But, yes, four just win babies. NFL.com, they released their post-NFL draft power rankings. And the Raiders came in ranked 10th. I see that, and I'm like, okay. I definitely think that the Raiders are a top 10 team. However, I don't really like that they were ranked dead last in the AFC West. And I'm not really surprised. I mean, the Raiders have been ranked dead last the past two seasons. And you know what? Okay, whatever. Guess what happens every year? The Raiders don't finish last. The San Francisco 49ers at five I thought was a little bit rich for me because you still don't know what you're going to get out of Trey Lance. And if Debo Samuel's moved, I'm sorry, that's not even a top 10 team. Are the Green Bay Packers without Devontae Adams? They lost a lot of defensive players. Are we sure that they're better? The Denver Broncos, I actually don't have a problem with them being ranked this high for the simple fact of they have Russell Wilson, they have good skill position players, but I'll take the Raiders over the Chargers. I'll take the Raiders over the Denver Broncos. It's just some of these other teams, man. It's uh, it's very peculiar to me. So let me know, y'all, what you're thinking. And I'm ripping on Sam because Sam's producing and he's a Broncos fan. For the real ones out there, you know what to type right now. Where were the Raiders? If you were making your power rankings, because over at Chat Sports, which, yes, I make videos over at Chat Sports, youtube.com slash Chat Sports TV, there's a lot of times where I get stuck with the power rankings. And sometimes it's a little bit difficult to used to think with your head and not so much with your heart, right? I want to be able to put the Raiders at one, but the Raiders aren't the best team in the National Football League. So where would you rank the Raiders in your NFL power rankings? I went ahead, I did it, I broke it all down. I had the Raiders at number eight. And some of you are like, well, did you, where did the other AFC West teams fall in? I put the Chiefs over them for the simple fact of that they have been the defending champs. They've gone out, they've done a few things to try to replace Tyree Kill. But I have the Raiders at number eight. We got more rumors for y'all coming up, but guess what? I got even more videos for you guys over on Locals as well. We're dropping videos, to at least two videos a week. I'm doing two lives this week on Locals because we were hella busy last week. So if you want, you can go ahead and you go to RaidersReport.Locals.com or Look at this. We're upgrading here. You can just scan that QR code, and it's going to take you right to Locals. Become a member, or you can become a supporter for $10 a month or $100 for the year. What do local supporters get to see? Well, I dropped this video this morning. Raiders 2022 UDFA grade. You can see all my grades for all 13 of the UDF players. I also went live yesterday, and it was a simple talking about the draft talking about UDFAs, talking about free agency. So if you like what I do here, you're also going to like what I do over on Locals. Go ahead, join the group. It's RaidersReport.Locals.com. Let's go to the next story here, and it's around Alex Leather with the Raiders' first-round pick in last year's draft back in 2021, 17 overall. The Raiders drafted Leatherwood to be a starting right tackle. And ESPN has him listed as the starting right tackle again because they just updated their depth charts. So, is Leatherwood going to be starting at right tackle this season for the Las Vegas Raiders? Oh, I'm going to go ahead and give it only one just win, baby, which means it's a 25% chance of happening. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just I personally would not do it. So, ESPN... They go ahead, they update the depth charts, and I had a few people ask me, Mitch, did you see ESPN? They updated their depth charts. And I said, yeah, personally, I don't even look at ESPN's depth charts because I don't know who does them, but for the most part, 
it's never really all that accurate. So, yes, Leatherwood is listed as the starting right tackle. And, yes, Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler, or whoever the hell updates Raiders.com, has listed him as an offensive guard and an offensive tackle. So the fact that that happened, I know that these rumors have been going on for quite some time. The issue is this. I'm going to show you a depth chart, and if you think that this is going to be the Raiders' starting offensive line, then that's fine. It's your opinion. But this is what ESPN had. They had Colt Miller at left tackle. No qualms there. Denzel Good at left guard. Andre James at center. Jermaine Illuminor at right guard. And then Alex Leatherwood at right tackle. So I'm like, okay, I'm trying to wrap my mind around certain things here or there. Here's the thing, though. I like Leatherwood, and he's working really hard this offseason. I was actually talking to a Raiders player last week about Leatherwood, and he told me, you're going to see a different player. Yes, they're friends, but at the same time, we'll see what ends up happening. Here's the issue. Alex Leatherwood doesn't have the footwork to play offensive tackle. When you watch Colt Miller play, Colt Miller is a superior athlete compared to Alex Leatherwood. Leatherwood's a good player, and I wish that they would just keep him at guard because the more reps you get at a position, this might be crazy, the better at it you are going to be. So I watched Leatherwood play long enough. He just He's not quick enough. He doesn't have the first step that you need to do and play an offensive tackle in. He's not confident in himself over there. That's why he had the amount of false starts that he did. So when I look at Leatherwood, I see his size, I see his footwork, and he got better and better playing guard last season. And I've always said, if you want to get the best out of Alex or a younger player, go put a solid right tackle over there on the right side. That's one of the biggest reasons why I want the Raiders to go out and get Daryl Williams. That's just less things that Leatherwood has to go ahead and worry about. So I will say this, though. One of the very key things that McDaniels and Ziegler have been saying all offseason that they're going to put the best players out there. They have not guaranteed to anybody that I've seen that Leatherwood is even a lock to start. So would this be a frustrating thing because he was the first round pick in last year's draft? Yes. But I am telling y'all right now, if you think that Alex Leatherwood is a locked-in starting offensive lineman player for the Raiders this upcoming season, I'm saying that you're crazy. I do think that he is going to start, but he is not a lock to start. Whoever going to be the best five offensive linemen that they can put together, those are going to be your starters. So coming up here on the Raiders report, I've been getting asked left and right, Mitch, give me your starting offensive line. Mitch, give me your starting offensive line. Well, I will go ahead and give you guys my starting offensive line projection. But before I do, remember, y'all, I am on Instagram. I am on Twitter, at MitchellRens365. And a lot of y'all probably already know the route I'm about to go, and it's because you follow me on social media. Yes, I have certain studio times here at Chat Sports, and yes, I make videos every day. But I also give my opinion. I give extra analysis, extra Raiders news, extra Raiders rumors where on social media. So seriously, hit me up at Mitchell Renz 365 Now before I go ahead and give my offensive line, because I feel like if I give my starting offensive line, everyone's going to pick the exact same thing I do, and that's no fun. Yes, I like when people agree with me. That, that's obviously a good feeling, right? It's like a nice little pat on the back. But I also like when you guys disagree with me. I like conversations, and I like when people can sit down and have an adult conversation with me when we have different ideas. And sometimes, like I've talked to Raider fans, and okay, you guys can pers persuade me a certain way. Or, okay, maybe I can persuade you a certain way. So go down in the comments section right now and predict the Raiders starting offensive line next season. Here's my starting offensive line projection. And hear me out because I know some people are going to freak out a little bit. I have Colt Miller as your left tackle. Denzel Good is going to be your left guard. There's a reason why the Raiders didn't cut Denzel Good. They could have cut him. They could have saved $4.2 million. They held on to him, and I have already heard that they like Denzel Good as the left guard. The one that's going to make a lot of eye openings is Dylan Parman, the third-round pick, number 90 overall this past year's draft. I've watched tons and tons of tape of Parman over the past two days. Parman is going to be a starting player this upcoming season. Yes, I'm still going to go ahead and put Alex Leatherwood at right guard, and I'm going to put Brandon Parker at right tackle because there's a reason why they brought Parker back. There's a reason why they gave him the contract that they did. There's a reason why there's incentives on it. I believe that they believe in Brandon Parker. So I'm going to continue to talk about Dylan Parman here. I'm going to continue to talk about Andre James and let you know what I'm all thinking because I know some of you are like, well, Wait a minute, what about Andre James? I'll get to it. But is Dylan Parma going to be starting week one for the Raiders? I am giving this one four just win babies, and I am going to die on this mountain. If I were to go ahead and do my my 
Raiders draft grades all over again, I'd probably give Parman a B plus or an A minus. This kid is just good, man. Like, if you get time, watch the tape on him. He is a better center than Andre James. He is a better guard than Alex Leatherwood. And if it came down to either Parman or Leatherwood starting, it would be Parman. If it comes down to Andre James or Parman starting, it would come down to Parman. He has legit Pro Bowl potential if he's in the right scheme. Legit Pro Bowl potential if he gets the right offensive line coach. Carmen Rosillo is all of those things. And he's going to fit this scheme perfectly. Plus, did anybody pick up what Dave Ziegler had to say just right after the draft? He didn't say Parman was going to compete at guard. The first position he mentioned was center. Why? Because from what I have been told, the Raiders view Dylan Parman as a center. So the fact that he has that opportunity, cool. He's extremely high IQ player, extremely athletic offensive lineman, and the fact that McDaniels is going to use a lot of complex run systems. Go watch Par. He always knows what to do. His eyes are always in the right area. He's going to be able to process defenses quickly, which is why I believe come week one of the season, Dylan Parham is going to be the starting center of the Las Vegas Raiders. So what happens to Andre James then, right? Because I know a lot of y'all are asking. And it's not that the Raiders don't like Andre James, but you have to keep in mind Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler, the Raiders organization that is together right now, they didn't commit to Andre James long-term. They have nothing to stick with James. And yes, they restructured his contract around a little bit. And to move on from him, you only save $100,000. So I would see Andre James as going, to, going ahead and being a backup center, being the backup guard. Yes, it's another bad move that Gruden and, John, and Mike Mayock made, which really shouldn't surprise any of us. But I'm telling y'all right now, Andre James, he might be able to get a guard position, but I think Dylan Parham is going to be the starting center here. So here's my question, and the reason why I'm presenting this one is, who's the worst player on this list here? Because if I'm telling you that Colt Miller is going to be a starting left tackle, and I'm telling you Dylan Parham is going to be the starting center, well, that leaves three other spots, left guard, right guard, right tackle. And the Raiders have said that they're going to put the best players out there. doesn't matter where you were drafted. It doesn't matter what your contract is. Why? They are not committed to any of these players here. So, whoever is the worst player on screen is the guy that I do not see starting. If you believe it's Andre James, type AJ. If you believe it's Denzel, good. Go ahead and type DG. What about Brandon Parker? You can go ahead and type BP. If you think it's Alex Leatherwood, go ahead and type AL.